Hello, everyone. That didn't... Hello, everyone! Oh, that doesn't work quite like it did last week, did it? Remember, I used to come out and I'd say, Hello, everyone, and you would all retort, Hello! And then we get started on the class. It was a great way to get connected. Well, our connections are a little bit different now. We're finishing up our spring break, and then next week, we're going to begin our remote learning where our classes will be presented completely online. What an adventure. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to the online Dr. Z. Here he is. Ta-da! It's the online Dr. Z. Please notice, new shirt, new tie. In fact, I'm even wearing my teacher's tie because that's what this is all about, teaching. Yes, things will be different. But interestingly enough is that our class has been developed so it'll work both online and face-to-face. -face. So there's not going to be a lot of changes. Some things will be different. Our main goals will remain the same. I will still challenge you with meaningful learning experiences to introduce the skills and knowledge that are required. And you'll engage yourself in the learning experience to demonstrate your mastery of the skills and knowledge just to beat the challenge that I've given you. That's going to stay the same. But let's take a look at our responsibilities. My responsibilities? I'm going to identify what you need to learn. I'm going to engage you in a positive learning experience. And then I want to provide you with the necessary response for your success. Yours? Well, you need to engage yourself in that learning experience. You need to process what needs to be learned then you need to demonstrate proficiency through creating amazing projects and mastering your quizzes. And the basis of all this is to organize yourself. I know you're organized now, but you have a different world, a different situation. So you might want to consider other things when it comes to organizing. And I'll show you some pointers. Now, remember, in the class, this is what we have left for the rest of the semester. We have five lectures. We have global collaboration, computational thinking, information literacy, interactive learning, and becoming a change agent in your school. Exciting topics. Let's take a look at the projects. You're presently working on the teacher website, and you've really made a lot of progress on that so far. Next week, you'll begin your Google Classroom, which is going to be connecting to your teacher website. You're still working on your personal learning network. This is something you've probably already identified, one or two PLNs, and it's a matter of finishing that off. And then finally, your final project is an interactive learning tool, or you have the option to pursue the Google Certified Educator through the exam. You have a choice of one or the other. If you get the interactive learning tool done, it really is an opportunity for you to culminate all the things that you've been learning this semester and bring it into one project. And if you pass, you have something else to put on your resume. It shows you have a great amount of skill in using Google tools. And this will get you far. Lecture. As always, the lectures will be supported through the content folders. As you can see here, each lecture folder begins by identifying your learning outcomes. Then it identifies the readings, watchings, listenings, and doings that we want you to review before you watch the lecture. Remember, this takes you out to a website that has all of these materials instead of using a, a textbook. Thirdly is the actual lecture recording. This is the one that tells you the information. It's based upon the, the materials you've already read. And it includes a lecture handout, which are the slides that are used during the lecture. Finally, after you've done the RWLDs, you've watched the lecture, and maybe even talked it over with your colleagues, it's time for you to take the quiz. This is a five question open book quiz. Because what we want to do is we want you to think about it. In fact, take it with someone else. The two of you could sit down and while you're sitting there and learning and, and considering what the right answers are, this is called learning. This is a process in which you are going to be using the materials you have, calculating, building upon it, and using that for learning labs. Now these are your class projects. Now remember that when you open this up, the class project begins with the requirements. Now these requirements are the parts that identify the background for it, what is expected, the point structure, 
and also the examples. Really important to sh see the examples and see what other people have done. As well as the project requirements, there are other materials that will show in your content folder. Things such as the teacher web uh, lab outline. This is a step-by-step -step process for creating a teacher web. Also, you're going to be learning about using Google Forms and slides in, your, in this class. And you're going to need to use those in your teacher website. So we have an outline there as to how to do that. And then finally, there's the submission drop box. The submission drop box is where you're going to include the URL for your assignment as well as the um, a reflection template. Support. I'm trying to provide you with additional support since we're not going to be seeing each other face to face anymore. Now it's important for me to provide as much support to you as I can through digital uh, formats. This kind of video is one way to do that. I have a few other things we've created as well. First of all, we have the Einstein room. If you have any problems or questions or things like that, go ahead and post them into the Einstein room. You'll notice on the lower left hand corner, the third one up, it says Einstein room. When you click on that, it'll take you into the discussion room and this is where you can leave your ideas. Instead of having everybody send notes to me, you know, with the same question, it makes sense to put them into the Einstein room and if you have a question, go take a look and see if anybody's already answered it. If you don't know the answer, wait for somebody to answer. If you do know the answer, if you go in there and you like to answer things, see if there's some things in there you could answer. I'll be taking a look in there too. This is a way in which we can help build community. Number two, <clears throat> we're provi I'm providing student hours. This is what most people call office hours, but I'm calling them student hours because it's about you. I've decided to use uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9.30 to 10 and then uh, 12.30 to 1 because those are the times that I teach classes typically. Um, we'll see how this works and see what happens. I, I'm going to be sitting uh, in my Zoom room just waiting for you. I'll be working on other things at that time, but I'll be waiting for you to drop by and say hi. This is a time when we can just talk. I can answer questions. I can provide instruction, whatever you need, but I want to make sure that I'm providing support for you. If you have something that you want individually arranged because maybe it's private, maybe it's just something you want to talk about that you don't want other people to hear about, I'm there for you. So contact me and we'll set up a time which would be a one-on-one. -on -one. Also, I want to give you support, some moral support. And that is that a lot of you are doing amazing things for your PLN. You're contacting teachers from outside the United States. You're going out and you're contacting authors and people who are you look up to, people that you really want to make a connection with because those are the kinds of people you want to connect your students to. And so what you can do is, remember when we uh, were in class, we would do something called the, the PLN brag, brag Board. And that's where you got to put up something about what kind of PLN um, activities you've been doing in developing your PLN. Well, I'm going to give you that chance to do this as well. You just click on it, and it'll take you to a, a, a Google Doc where you can actually enter your information about that. Now, I know Iowans don't like to brag. Let's just call it an information board where you're sharing the things that you've done. I also want to support you through explanations. You've already received a check sheet. Every Friday I'm going to be sending you a check sheet about the things that need to be done over the next week. Yes, I know you have schedules. Yes, I know you have everything else, but sometimes it's easy for things to get away. So this is a way in which you can actually use this as a check sheet to make sure you're doing everything and getting it all done. Secondly, I'll be doing weekly videos. Sometimes you just can't get all that information across on a, in just written form. And I like to share things with you too. And then every once in a while there will be periodic videos or other additional uh, comments that I'll be putting in the announcements section just so you can have those because I want to keep you up to date. And I want you to keep me up to date. If you have questions, contact me and then I can do what I need to to help support. So your responsibilities. What are your responsibilities as a student? Let's talk about that. First of all, you want to get the most out of your experiences and assignments. This isn't just a matter of going through and getting it done. Although that's a goal that you might want to consider. I want you to set your goals. Is it that you're trying, going to try to do your best like you've always been doing or are you just going to kind of let it slide? This is something you need to decide upon. I know that you all have the capacity and, and capabilities and interest to do the very best because you know that the work that you're doing now is going to be benefiting your students in the future. So take a look at that. Once you've done that, I want you to organize your schedule. 
uh, review our ed tech and design schedule as, as well as the due dates take a look at those put those into your calendar identify them into your calendar and then kind of do a back back stepping where you look at when it needs to be done and then take a look at the parts that are it and identify what types of mini due dates you would have along the way so you could actually get those points get those things done in sequence um, make sure that you identify specific times when you're going to be studying at home it is so easy to forget about studying because you're not going to school it's all online and I know I've had that problem myself <laughs> even as a teacher so the idea is that what I want you to do is I want you to be very specific about it I want you to find a specific place where you're going to be working too where are you gonna do your homework you're probably at home which means that you don't you have a different environment and you need to find out where that where you want to go to to make it so that you can do your best maybe find a virtual study buddy one of your buddies from class it's always great to have somebody else to talk to about this it's a great way to make sure you get things done also it's a great way to to find out their points of view and, and you'll learn a lot that way finally what I'd like you to do is watch the video how to make the most of online courses this is a 15 minute video it addresses many of the things I just said and there's the address and that is tinyurl.com slash make most ETD well folks it's going to be a great semester and I just want to remind you to keep at it and keep in touch in other words keep working find what you need to do develop those skills because you're going to be a future teacher and you need to be able to support your students and most importantly contact me if you have any questions have a great week and I'll be talking to you again next week bye